pretty good, but uh, you would not take uh, headshots. You want to get that bigger target center mass. What you're watching is thermal. Thermal is not really good in daytime because everything's heating up. It's going off of heat. And you add one just for the road. That's a violation. You're going to go to prison for that. Hey everybody, my name is Richard Minus, nine years active duty Army. Six of the nine years I served as a sniper team leader, three tours to Iraq as a sniper, did some diplomatic security for the US Embassy in Baghdad. Today we're gonna to be watching the Medal of Honor 50 Cal sniper mission, so uh, let's get it. How's our imagery miss this shit? Can't see everything, that's why we're on the ground. Wow, man, this is... Pretty interesting, first time I watched some video games. And uh, wow, it's pretty real, it's going down. So the secondary mission of a sniper is to collect and report battlefield information. And so that's what he's doing right now. He's just reporting to hire, letting them know what's going on as far as enemy combatants on the ground. We have three fighters, primitive camp, his spotter is going to shoot a laser and, and uh, figure out the range of the targets. Try to figure out which way the wind is blowing so he can make uh, windage adjustments for the shooter. So he's going to be calling saying, hey, he's at this range, this uh, windage. So he's going to continue sweeping. But again, he's got to figure out the range. He's got to figure out windage. It's not easy um, unless he did his homework before, which is a range card. You would fill it out, draw, and uh, find your key points on the map and in front of you and you would put the windage and uh, distance beforehand so when you see your targets you can acquire multiple targets and engage quickly. You're going to dial in as the shooter. All you're doing is just waiting for word from your spotter. You're not doing anything else but focusing on your target. Spotter controls everything. He's the team leader. He's in charge. These guys are guerrilla fighters, so they want to stay alive. They're not even going to use fire, or they're going to be in a cave when they're using fire. They're not going to be out in the open letting them know, hey guys, I'm over here. No, uh, you're in a combat zone. You got to stay low, stay out of sight, because we have the overwhelming firepower. They don't, so they have to fight that guerrilla style to be able to survive. Pretty, pretty good, but uh, headshots, you would not take uh, headshots. You want to get that bigger target, the uh, center mass. But these guys aren't really responding. They're kind of just lying low, which is typically what they would do anyways. You would just hit the ground and try to take cover because you don't know where the fire is coming from, so you can't really react on it. But he's doing exactly what our primary uh, mission of a sniper is to uh, deliver long-range precision rifle fire on key targets, select targets, and targets of opportunity, which he's getting right now, the targets of opportunity. And all headshots, pretty, pretty amazing. That's pretty inaccurate, but stay away from those headshots. You'll be a lot more accurate. When, when you're searching and, and sweeping areas for targets, you're looking for uh, things that stand out. It could be movement. Movement gives it away every time. Your eyes drawn to movement. Some like flickering, if uh, something's flashing, maybe a belt buckle or something shiny. Bodies, human beings, we're constantly moving. We're twitching, we're moving around every little second. So it makes it really hard to fire. You can't, you gotta zero in on them and you gotta kind of judge their movement, how they're gonna move so that you can lead them into that shot. But these guys are just being stationary, so they're uh, pretty, pretty easy targets. And at this point, after he fired so many rounds, he's burned his hide. Whether you know where that fire is coming from or not, uh, they're gonna start reacting on the uh, position and so sooner or later they're going to just start firing sweeping the area with uh, overwhelming firepower so you got to get out of there because as a sniper you, you don't have nothing but a rifle maybe your shooter has an m4 other than that i mean you're out there all alone enemy combatants they would be moving around just like ants you stir up the ant pile they're scattering they're moving around quickly and they're going to be firing in all directions just to keep your head down this guy's laying there, but he's not firing. So when you have sniper fire, you're gonna get down, take cover, and you're gonna start sweeping the possible area where you think they could be, firing all everything you got just to keep that sniper's head down so you can move on the area or move away from the area. And see, they're, they're coming on. They're, at this point, he's gotta call for higher, get airstrike. This is exactly why 
Uh, once you fire those shots, you gotta keep moving. You gotta get out of the area, find a better position. What you're gonna do is you're gonna start firing. A lot of rounds down range, now they're swarming on you. You gotta start shooting and you gotta start moving. Shooting, move, shoot, move, shoot, move. Get out of there. You won't be staying there firing because you're gonna run out of bullets sooner or later. He's gotta go, he's gotta get out of there. He's gonna start getting hit, so there he is. He's now in a handgun. That might as well be throwing rocks at him. All right, let's go, let's go. Get out of there, so he's gotta use his team. So when you have two guys, one guy's laying fire, keeping their heads down, the other guy's moving back. And then it's a leapfrog. You're just leapfrogging back, taking cover, trying to get out of there. Yeah, at this point, he's, he's doing pretty good. He's, he's taking cover, he's popping shots and moving back in cover. Reload. All right, let's go, let's keep moving. Let's move, move, move. So you wouldn't be using a handgun. That thing is worthless in a firefight when you got rifles. So pick up your rifle. If you're out of bullets, good luck. Cause that nine mil ain't gonna do anything. That's good, he's, he's clearing the guy. He's gonna probably take his ammo and his weapons. There you go. And he added one just for the road. That's, that's a violation. Rules of engagement violation. You're gonna go to prison for that. As Soon as you guys are taking contact or uh, you're calling for evac, you have a, a team that's on standby, a QRF, a quick ready force. What they're gonna do is they're gonna be on standby waiting for you as soon as you're taking fire or you've hit targets and you need to get evac. They're responding on there. They know exactly where you're at how to find you, you're gonna pop smoke, they're gonna lay down fire, they're gonna land a bird and get you out of there. So you have a couple of minutes. This is pretty real, I mean, there's gonna be people laying there, crying, yelling, and moving around still. You gotta just keep it moving. It's getting, they're, they're trying to seek higher ground right now so they can get the advantage with the firepower. But yeah, you're not gonna engage that group because they're gonna just tear you apart. So those guys would have seen you. Three, two, one, yeah, do it. All right, that's that's smart. Grenade, hey. It's pretty good, you guys are going good. Doing really good with that. All right, now you gotta move, shoot and move. You gotta keep moving, always keep moving. You're a small team, you, you don't have much firepower, you can't fight a, a big force, so you gotta keep it moving. You would be getting tired, especially humping the uh, Barrett 50 cal around. I carried that quite a bit. It weighs a lot and the rounds weigh even more. You know, when you're having multiple magazines of Barrett uh, ammo, I mean, it's, it's weighing you down. So you definitely would be getting tired, kind of want to scrap the Barrett at that point because you can't fire it from the hip. So it's kind of worthless on the move. I would have junked it at that point. All right, so he's going up there. He's, he's doing pretty well. They're, they're getting that high ground. You would have like a camel back, it's a little backpack you'd fill it with water. Typically you have about two to three liters of water on hand. Depending on your mission, you might have had supplies because one of the biggest things is when you get dropped off, you're, you're there for a couple of days, you know? Like this is action packed, it looks great and everything. The realistic part about it is you're just sitting and watching for a very long time. Like you're just literally, nothing could happen. You might just be set up for 48 hours and you might see nothing. You always gotta be on your toes, but it's very rare where you're gonna be in a major firefight, you know, especially as a sniper. You're uh, shooting and you're, you're moving out, you know, you're, that's, that's it. You, you're not staying there to engage an army. The biggest thing is the psychological aspect a sniper has, so you don't need to uh, kill a whole group of people. You shoot a few of them and now they're worried because how many more people are actually watching at any point so it's like fighting a ghost, you know? So the psychological aspect is huge when it comes to sniper play. When you go on these sniper missions, real big portion about being a sniper is being disciplined. You will be set up for 48 hours, sitting, watching one sector of fire, just one picture, and you gotta stay attentive to every little piece of information you're gonna see. So what we would do as a sniper team is you would take shifts. So you'd watch maybe 30 to 45 minutes. The other guy, he's gonna be relaxing. He's gonna be keeping his mind right. 
and then he's going back on the gun. You're switching out that whole time. In sniper school, we had to learn about, uh, it's called Kim's game. Well, you set up 10 objects, just random objects on a table, and you just keep walking around, and you got one minute, and you gotta look at all those pieces, what's on the table, and try to remember their size, their colors, their shapes, what they appear to be, what you think they may be. And then at that point, they take us out of the room, and then they'll torture us basically, like making us do push-ups, sit-ups, and rolling in the mud, and do a lot of exercise to stress you out, stress your mind out. And uh, later on in the day, they would give us a piece of paper and we had you know, two minutes to fill out what those objects were. So you had to be accurate, you had to know those sizes and those shapes, and it's a practice. As you practice, you get better, sharper, and you start to learn and relay information a lot better. So the uh, guy that came up with that memory system is Roger, uh, Kipling. He wrote the Jungle Book. It's really good to teach yourself how to identify things and how to be uh, detailed in your information. Physical conditioning is, is key. You know, it has to do with your confidence. You're going to be confident. You're going to be ready to tackle anything. And so now they're delivering those airstrikes that they called in and they're clearing the, the uh, objective so that they can land the uh, birds in there safely so nobody else is at risk. He needs to put that gun away, you know, so stop uh, flagging his uh, battle buddy there. Some last man's always got to be checking the rear, checking the six, see what's going on. And so he, I don't know how he carried that thing up the hill, but uh, he did. You know, you, you're carrying a pack of, of ammo, it's easily 50 pounds just in, in ammo alone. Honestly, in my missions, we would just carry like three magazines, which is about eight rounds a piece because you wouldn't be firing more than that. As soon as you fire a couple of shots, you've made your point, now it's time to move out. Yep, I would be just let the birds just sweep and clear that, clear that area. Because you're gonna get more damage, it's gonna cause more than your rifle fire. What you're watching is thermal. Thermal's not really good in daytime because everything's heating up, it's going off of, of heat. So, you know, if the, if the day's hot, things are gonna be glowing. You, you would mainly use thermal at night. When you're firing with the Barrett, one of the things you got to know is that the, the kick of the weapon is not um, really bad. I mean, the M4 has a, a much more uh, kick than a, a Barrett does, but the concussion of the round firing, because it's a big round going down range, is what rings your bell. So firing it multiple rounds, like literally you'll, your nose will start running, your ears are ringing even with earplugs in. I blew out my ear just firing it in a, um, a confined space. I was deaf out of my ear for a week. And I had earplugs in just because of the concussion. It just, you know, compounds. So you never fire a, a bear at 50 cal in a confined position, in a bunker, in a really closed, uh, enclosed space. The fire is not going to be that accurate at all. You know what I mean? So when there's multiple targets moving quickly, you got to get out of there because, you know, it takes time to deliver that fire on, on the objective. That angle is uh, going to change your, your fire. You know, that round, it arcs, it shoots high. So if you're going up, you're going to shoot a lot higher. The scope on that, there would be some mill dots. Uh, you would use the mill dots as they help uh, figure range or utilize Kentucky windage. Also in sniper world, it's called hold off. And headshots, man, that's, that's too fake right there, man. He's not going to be shooting headshots at these guys. He's not going to be even hanging out and engaging at this point, but they're doing pretty good. They've got the high ground, they got cover, they're moving around. You know, it's a little half and half when it comes to the realism. So guys, it's been like, honestly, about 15 years since I played video games or even really looked at them and considered them. But wow, they've come a long way. It's, it's pretty real. It, it's, you gotta teach me how to play. <laughs> hey everybody, thank you for watching. My name is Richard Minus. And for more videos like this, be sure to check out Gameology on YouTube and Facebook. So uh, no, I'm, I'm just trying to figure it out because yeah, it's different um, as far as hitting targets with that. Awesome. I'm gonna run out. Yeah, <laughs>